teacher. Hello students. Welcome to today's lesson and introduction to auxiliary views. In our last lesson, we have seen the techniques of sketching, multi-view and pictorial drawings. Let us briefly refine them now. In our previous lesson, we have seen the basic skills of sketching, multi-view and pictorial drawings. In sketching multi-view drawings, we have seen the two methods which are frequently practiced, the outside-in method and the inside-out method. We have also practiced the techniques of sketching oblique and isometric drawings. And finally, we saw the techniques of sketching the two types of perspective drawings, the one-point perspective and the two-point perspective. I hope you have well practiced on your practical periods and wherever else too. I once again tell you that the value of technical sketching is immeasurable and permanent. In today's program, we start a new chapter, Auxiliary View. Do you know what the word auxiliary means? You probably guessed right. Auxiliary means secondary or supplementary. When we say secondary, notice that it means there are main or principal views which are not auxiliary. Students, did you know that a French mathematician called Gaspard Monge develops the theory of projection at the end of 18th century? He uses to projection planes at right angles to each other to visualize the object's character and structure. Earlier in your grade 11 technical drawing lessons, we have defined the word projection as the view of an object. This gives you a hint that auxiliary views are part of the projection system. Students, I want you to discuss on the projection and types of projections that you have learned on your grade 11 program to answer these simple questions. Question 1. Which types of projections do you remember? 2. What's projection plane? And 3. Which are the principal planes?
Welcome back. Did you recall that there are different types of projections? Let's see them. In technical drawing, there are two types of projection methods, central projection and parallel projection. Central projection is commonly known as perspective projection. A parallel projection is classified into oblique projection and orthographic projection. The two dimensional plane on which the projection is drawn is called picture plane or plane of projection. In orthographic projection there are three principal planes which are perpendicular to each other and these planes are the horizontal projection plane, the frontal projection plane, and the profile projection plane. But there is a minor problem while using the principal planes. There are times when the six principal views will not completely describe an object. This is especially true when there are inclined or oblique features on an object. Inclined plane is a plane which is perpendicular to one of the principal planes and inclined to the other two principal planes. Oblique plane is inclined to all the principal planes and appears to be visible on the three views. For these cases, a special orthographic view called an auxiliary view can be created. Additionally, auxiliary views are used to show an object from an odd angle for any of a variety of reasons. An auxiliary view is an orthographic view taken in such a manner that the lines of sight are not parallel to the principal projection planes, which are frontal, horizontal, or profile. There are an infinite number of possible auxiliary views of any given object. Well, as I've tried to point out, auxiliary views help to solve the visual distortions of inclined and oblique lines and planes. But, can you guess how? Try to study the image on the screen and discuss with your classmate to find out how is the auxiliary view helpful in solving graphical problems. Go ahead and start it now.
Welcome back. The six principal planes show the true face or length of the geometric figure when the surface is parallel to the planes. If you think about it, it's a pretty interesting concept. An auxiliary plane of projection is assumed to be parallel to the inclined surface so that the auxiliary view shows the true shape of the inclined surface. Auxiliary views are used for determining the true length and inclination of a line, the point view of a line and each view of a plane, the true shape and size of a plane, the distance between two skew lines. Skew lines are lines which are not parallel to any principal planes. Auxiliary views are also used for determining the projection of solids, the true shapes of sections of solids and curves of intersections, etc. Well, students, since you have been doing an orthographic projection on your grade level lessons, you might have noticed the term reference line too. A reference line is the line of intersection between two mutually perpendicular projection planes. Such lines are used as baselines from which all measurements of distance of points along the projectors are taken in relation to other projections. Reference line is represented by a phantom line. Phantom line is a thin broken line with one long and two short dashes. The length of the long dash goes from 18 millimeters to 36 millimeters while the short dashes are drawn at 3 millimeters. The gaps between dashes are drawn 1.5 millimeter long. Reference planes are a variation on the glass box. They appear as edges in the auxiliary and related views. Length perpendicular to the fold line are measured relative to the reference plane. Reference line is like folding line or hinge line because of its character. Fold lines represent the edges of the glass box and orthographic lines are projected from adjacent views across fold lines. Object distances from fold lines are obtained from related views. Let's recall another term from the basic projection. The top view is often called horizontal projection. I want you to discuss about the horizontal projection and why it is called a horizontal projection.
Well, it was obvious that horizontal projection or top view is taken from the horizontal projection plane. Horizontal projection is a view of an object formed by an orthographic projection onto a horizontal projection plane. It's also called a plan or top view of the object. The projectors in the horizontal projection are assumed to be vertical because they have to be perpendicular to the horizontal projection plane. Students, there are two types of planes which are perpendicular to the horizontal plane. These planes are perpendicular to each other and provide elevation views of the object. Students, I want you to discuss out the name and function of these planes of projection or picture planes. The image will give you a better clue.
most of you probably didn't forget about the profile and the vertical planes. These are planes which provide the elevation view of an object and they are perpendicular to the horizontal plane too. Let's clarify that. A view created on a picture plane placed perpendicular to the horizontal plane of projection. The picture plane is termed as elevation plane. The common types of elevation planes are the frontal and profile projection planes. This makes the front and side views the principal elevation views. Notice that it's possible to have an infinite number of auxiliary elevation planes. In today's lesson, you have learned the basic concept in technical drawing and in descriptive geometry. Develop this concept by solving many graphical problems, especially using your freehand sketching. Before the end of our lesson for today, let's revise what we have learned. First, we revise the concept of projection from our grade level lessons. Projection is classified as central or perspective and parallel projection. Parallel projection is later classified as oblique projection and orthographic projection. In orthographic projection, we have the principal views and the auxiliary views. Auxiliary views are projections taken from picture planes which are not parallel to the principal planes. Auxiliary views are used to show true length, point view, distance between skew lines, projection of solids and true shape of the given geometric figure. Reference line is the line of intersection between two mutually perpendicular projection planes. This line is represented by a phantom line on the orthographic view. Finally, you have seen the horizontal and elevation projections as they are projections from the principal and auxiliary projection planes. Well, students, this brings us to the end of today's lesson. Keep practicing your exercises on your practical periods. In our next lesson, we will see the methods in projection of point, lines, and plane surfaces. Until then, thank you, teacher, and thank you, students. Goodbye.